hello everyone who's who's listening to this uh so i wanted to record something on the fifa world cup uh that is being hosted by qatar uh it's it's starting tonight the first game is going to kick off at 9:30 pm tonight and hopefully i'll be able to upload this video before that so yeah i just wanted to record this before the kick off uh for everyone who's into football or you know they're not exactly into football world cup is something that has a lot more reach than club football so i just thought that this is really important and that is why i'm i'm putting this out okay so football is is like like oxygen for me it's a necessity to go on therefore of course i cannot boycott the world cup but we should all be aware of the number of dead bodies upon which this year's fifa world cup in qatar is being organized i don't know the exact numbers but i read somewhere almost 15000 migrant workers uh, they have actually lost their lives over the last few years trying to build the infra- infrastructure in you know those conditions and under the kind of uh, tyranny that they have been put through it's it's insane uh it's been something that has bothered me for many years i've been hearing about this since 2015 16 17 and you know finally the event is here today a lot of football fans were actually hoping that the event will be shifted or it will not go on but it's going on and it's it's going to you know take place and now there is nothing else to do other than just try to you know take the positives from it so people from india nepal you know pakistan many other south asian countries uh they have lived in inhuman conditions and they were treated like slaves i've heard stories and i've heard personal stories these are not data from from the internet i've heard people saying this uh you know they have had their passports confiscated they were taken they, they had their passports burned down they were living in like you know 15 16 people living in a single hut you know it's it's like chols in in mumbai and you know so many people living inside in those hot conditions qatar is a very very hot country and i just cannot imagine what they went through many of them tried to flee some of them did manage to flee without passport and yeah it actually makes a pretty interesting story as a writer you know this is an this is a particular uh even that has interested me as a writer to do something but i just not found the time over the years to build a story around it maybe some day i will anyway so this is not an event to celebrate in my opinion this is for somebody who doesn't care i think you know maybe it doesn't matter but if you actually have feelings if you actually feel about the world i don't think you are going to you know go into this world cup with the same kind of feeling that you go into uh, that you have gone into in every other world cup till date it is just not possible uh, besides as a football fan this is really really misplaced uh, we are right in the middle of a football season league season basically league football is taking a break because of this world cup the world cup traditionally takes place in june july sometimes in may uh, very rarely in me i think june july the two months where majorly the football uh, the the international football events take place so this has been held in in winter months this is the first winter world cup actually and this is happening simply because during the summer months it was impossible for qatar to host the event in in those weather conditions so this is not ideal for anyone this is not ideal for the players i have seen a lot of players you know uh the the football season the league season kicks off in the month of august and a lot of footballers have been playing really slow so, some of them have had injuries some of them are, it is inevitable you know the hard work the the effort that the players put on you know trying to get themselves prepared for the season all that is lost the players who are not participating in the world cup the momentum is gone the momentum that the clubs the players that 
that they have built up in the last two three months that is gone and those who are playing in the world cup they are going to be you know absolutely destroyed there is going to be so much fatigue and exhaustion it is just you know it's it's really harsh on the players who are going in the world cup as well there is something that you know a person that i really admire i think jurgen klopp the liverpool manager he has said that you know the players who are going they are going to be devastated and it just destroys the momentum of the rest no one gains anything from this so i am really not expecting this to be a very watchable tournament firstly in those conditions it is going to drain the players as as the game wears on you know they are going to be tired we are going to see a lot of low scoring games nil nils and one nils and things like that and at, at the top of that there is high risk of muscle injuries because again you know players are going to lose a lot of water as they go on so here yeah, those who watch only the world cup they will perhaps not be affected as much because that is the quality of football. in any way i think the, the the quality of international football is not the same as league football but this is somebody who watches a lot of league football for them this is not going to be very exciting i want to be wrong i want to be proven wrong i don't want anyone to not enjoy this uh, this is a, this is an event that comes once in 4 years and here yeah, those who want to enjoy it of course they should be enjoying it no problems with that and here yeah, other than that of course you know qatar is is a country that has problems with letting people live their lives letting people love or wear what they want they are very strongly against uh, homosexuality and i don't know a lot of countries in europe are very vocal against homosexuality are very in favor of homosexuality and there have been some voices raised but you know it has never been strong enough uh, of course the human rights violations you know that that is something that has been talked about but we have not seen i think norway did uh, a strong protest but norway are, they wanted you know a lot of other global stars to come up front and a lot of teams to come together and stay united and speak out against it maybe boycott the world cup if required but of course norway did not qualify and a lot of other teams they probably did not care so anyway uh, we'll see some some kind of protests uh, to my knowledge i don't know if every Euro- european nation is doing it but at least i know england are doing it uh, harry kane is going to wear an armband the captain's armband it is going to have the rainbow flag on it so fifa has actually warned uh, fans at the stadium from other countries to not raise rainbow flags at the stadium because you know, it's, it's a strong warning they they've said if somebody raises a rainbow flag it could be snatched and they do not want to take a responsibility if there is some kind of public outrage and there is a beat down or something like that i don't understand you are hosting a world cup in your country and if you cannot provide the people visiting from elsewhere that bit of safety why are you hd hosting this event so there is something that we have heard they have banned alcohol which i don't have very strong opinions on that but again that is something which is you know culturally that is something that a lot of european nations and maybe some some north american countries as well they're not going to connect with it and you know, these these things are can cause unnecessary trouble which is not exactly related to football and yeah, i just don't like it um, another thing that i've i've seen and i've really liked is denmark are going to be wearing jerseys with faded out logos the sponsor logo i'm not exactly sure which sponsor is providing their shirts and their country's logo the football board's logo both are going to be faded out 
so it's, it's a red jersey Denmark's first choice jersey is red in color and the logos are going to be red as well so that they're not visible and I think the second and third jerseys are, are white and black it's the same for them as well so they've made it very vocally very clear that they do not want to stand out they if possible if it was sustainable they would probably stay back at home and not participate in this this event okay so at least i mean if at least this much we can expect and i think that this is something that should be appreciated and if they can sustain these protests at least this spe- speaks out something against an event like this uh besides of course uh as a liverpool fan i'll be hoping that our players representing in the world cup they do not get injured that is the the biggest thing that i am going to hope for from this qatar world cup because we've already lost quite a few players in last few months and Anyway, the Liverpool representation is really small this year. Um, so it it is it is not but we do have some some key players so uh, I'm going to be supporting England. I support England in cricket and football both way. So uh, I'm going to be supporting England boring Gareth Southgate's boring England. Uh, England is is not a very present team to watch at the moment it, it it feels really bad when you know a a country that has so many talented footballers right now plays five at the back with two defensive midfielders it's it's the first match is against, against iran and i think england have all the potential to go and get a big win there but i won't be surprised if, if it if it's a 1-0 or a generic 2-0 victory so yeah but anyway you don't change your team just because they're playing bad uh, so i will, will be supporting england and other than that the rest of it is always dependent on liverpool representation uh, my second choice sometimes over the years it has been spain sometimes it's been portugal sometimes it's been holland so my second choice is what well, was going to be senegal senegal is a country that i, I really like i've always liked i have had a history with senegal you know back in 2002 uh that was the first i had watched the 1998 world cup as well but i had very i have very small very little memories of that 2002 world cup was the first one that i sat purposefully and i watched the entire thing and the very first match was france versus senegal and our entire area our entire colony was supporting france they were the defending champions and I was the only one who was you know absolutely uh, buzzing for a country that I have never heard of I did not even uh, you know I I did not even know that a country like that exists and so I I was supporting Senegal and they won that game so this is something that I've written about in, in Facebook many times Papa Bouba Diop scoring that winning goal uh He's no more. Papa Bouba Diop passed away a couple of years back, I think. So, yeah, anyway, this this year, I think Senegal, it's it's a bit difficult to support Senegal right now because, uh, firstly, Sadio Mane left Liverpool, but still we we love him at Liverpool and, but he's not going to be there at the World Cup. He got injured and he's going to be out for two three months, so it's it's not going to be there. Uh, so other than senegal i think uh, uruguay is another team that i think i'll be rooting for uh, they have luis suarez liverpool past and darwin nunes liverpool present the two guys you know a young guy and a veteran leading the line and uruguay actually have some some really exciting players and i have a good feeling about them doing well in this tournament i can see them actually going far so they are the ones then maybe you know maybe uh netherlands as well virgil van dijk leading that side out uh so yeah denmark maybe so these are the four five countries that i'll be rooting for and 
of course the uh the asian teams japan and korea i think uh are ha- have some really good footballers i'm not sure son young min is going to be fit i don't know but anyway uh so yeah that is that is all i had to say in this video but uh i hope everyone you know for the, like i i said you know it it comes once in four years a lot of people who don't watch football they watch the world cup my mom is going to be watching the world cup uh, a lot of my relatives you know who do not follow league football they they are going to be watching the world cup and it's like a celebration in my own city i'm from kolkata which is kind of like the football capital of india and it is it is decorated it, it you know it's will lit up uh, there, there is a lot of brazil and argentina representation here two countries that i really do not support and yeah but still it feels really good when you know you are being engaged into something which is bringing so many people together and that is what you know in spite of all the things that are not correct about this tournament that is one thing that is uh correct and that is you know this this is a world cup and this is something that brings you know worlds of different people come come together and that is what we have to take away from it so yeah that, that's it that's it i i really don't have anything more to say uh, it's it's kicking off tonight 9:30 i don't know if it's going to be if there is going to be an inauguration event or something like this it's, it's been shown on a pretty terrible channel called sports 18 i did not know which channel is going to show the world cup i figured out a couple of days back i got the channel from from the cable operator and yeah so far what i've seen of course they do not have the rights of previous world cups but there is absolutely no preview and hopefully the coverage is not going to be that bad and yeah so enjoy it everyone enjoy enjoy the world cup and yeah that's it